London, the newly crowned capital of the financial world. And for many of those working here, the streets now really are paved with gold. The most I've made in a day is about £700,000. The city of London's awash with money, and it's being spent as fast as it's earned. There's definitely a conspicuous consumption trend going on. In the last few weeks, £10 billion has been paid out in bonuses, with at least one star player getting £50 million. We have guys this year who spent well in excess of £100,000 on four or five day holidays. But as the sales of fast cars, yachts and luxury properties hit record highs, criticism mounts. I think they're jealous. No one seems to be commenting about David Beckham's new salary. And at the end of the day, he's a guy who kicks a football around. They must be making a lot of money for their company. And so what if he takes home a £40 million bonus? I mean, he's, he's well entitled to it. And yeah, if I could get somebody who's making me £100 million, I'd give him £40 million straight away. Today's financiers have never been so wealthy or so celebrated. These are Britain's super rich. Friday night in London's West End. As the revelers and tourists pour into the theatres and bars, another group head for their favourite night spot. At Pangaea, nightclub of choice for the young bankers and traders who work in the city square mile, business is booming. Recent bonus payouts have made it party night every night. They'll just go absolutely nuts and they'll begin with a whole load of shots. And you can watch them deteriorate, <laughs> bottle after bottle of all the usual brands just being poured, I mean, sprayed around and poured over their heads, and it gets all a little bit silly. A bottle of beer costs four pounds. A bottle of vodka costs 130. But if you want to get noticed, you ask for champagne at up to 1,000 pounds a bottle. If you order a Magnum, you get these sort of flamethrowers and the music changes to the, the Rocky theme. And of course, everyone looks, then you get the competition beginning. So all the other tables who are trying to impress their girlfriends or their wives or their clients or their whatevers will say, right, and, and suddenly it just goes off. It's like a firework display in the club. The champagne off, as they call it, <laughs> spraying each other down with Cristal and Don Perignon. Tonight's club goers are paying up to 700 pounds just for a table. Some people can come here and spend 1,000 pounds, 20,000 pounds, 30,000 pounds um, in an hour or three hours and leave with a smile and say thank you very much and give a huge tip to the waitress and come back the next week. It is silly money and you do sometimes think, God, they must be earning ludicrous, ludicrous amounts of money or God help the bank whose corporate card that's on. Laurie Inman is among tonight's customers. At 25, he's one of the city's hottest young traders, using his own money to buy and sell German government bonds. The most I've made in a day is about £700,000. The most I've lost is about £250,000, which is quite a lot of money. But his gambles on the market have proved spectacularly successful. He makes in a year what some people will earn in a lifetime. Having the money I've got at my age, I know and realise how fantastically fortunate I am. It's going to sound ridiculous, but it's not something I think about all day, every day. Um, I'm a typical 25-year-old. The majority of city workers are in the same age bracket, many pulling seven-figure salaries and bonuses. They are reaping the benefits of rising share prices, an influx of foreign cash, and a huge growth in company mergers and acquisitions. The £10 billion the city has just shared out is equal to Britain's hospital building budget for the last 10 years. Britain is going through this quite remarkable social revolution in which there's been an explosion of wealth at the top end. Since Tony Blair came to power, the wealth of the top 1,000 has tripled. This wealth boom is being driven almost entirely by the city. And they're paying themselves bonuses that are sometimes as much as the lifetime earnings of sort of senior professionals, you know, from head teachers through to, uh, through to doctors. Maurizio Fabrice runs broking firms in London and Milan. A city veteran of nearly 20 years, he's witnessed the rise and rise of the annual payout. When I started working in the city with my first bonus, I pretty much bought what everyone was buying at the time, which was the Golf GTI. Um, I had that for a while, and then as the bonuses got, got bigger, then the cars got better as well. So I moved on to, I had a couple of Porsches, um, and then I got my first Ferrari. 
I do know of people who spent the whole of their first bonus in one go. I know one particular guy who spent it on a Porsche Boxster, and that's not unusual at all. Porsche Boxsters were a bit of a favourite with uh, first bonuses, particularly with the, the men. I think cars, for a lot of the guys in the city, is quite a big status symbol. It's sort of a measure of, of how you're doing internally in your company. Um, they want to have the first 599 in the garage or the first SLR in the garage. So they're just going to turn up in the, you know, downstairs in Canary Wharf with their new motor. Yeah, a little bit of competition there. Such lavish rewards have drawn criticism from clergymen, trade unionists, even government ministers, claiming the payouts are obscene. But brokers like Maurizio are unapologetic. You know, they are justified simply because these people are making money, you know, they, they know how to make money for their institution and, and as a result it's right that they should be in a competitive market where they can dictate their bonuses depending on how good they are. So absolutely anyone who's making, you know, 25 million pound bonuses, which is about 24 million 900 more than me, no I'm joking, um, is, um, is completely justified, hats off to him. It takes a certain sort of person to rise to the top. And to be fair, it's a huge challenge to get up there. So the sort of person who's going to rise that challenge is going to be someone, I would say in general, you know, who does desire that sort of money. Tom Wanless was 21 when he joined a leading city bank as an industry analyst. His rise through the ranks has bought him a luxury city penthouse and lifestyle to match. Salaries get ramped up quite nicely, certainly during your first few years, and the bonuses do too. And with such large payouts, competition is fierce. For most banks, bonuses um, come out in January, which basically means certainly for the last couple of months of any calendar year, um, everyone works their butts off even more than usual to ensure that they look sparkling when it comes around to the bonus time. It's very much a closed door affair, so you'll go in there, no one else will know, you know what, what you're hearing. They'll see you go in and see you come out, either with a big smile on your face or otherwise. And you do see a slight change in people around that time. Everyone wants to make sure that their name gets attached to the right deal to ensure that it looks like they've brought in lots of money for the company. If you look at Wall Street, the bonus day is a very symbolic and significant day. It's, it's sometimes known as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. All hell lets loose if people don't get the bonuses they think they deserve. And that kind of culture of expectation and demand that we're worth so much, we need these giant bonuses, gradually got transferred into the sort of British banks as well. I know f for a fact that um, someone's bonus, which was certainly over £100,000, complaining that it was like working for charity, um, which shocked me. <laughs> We've got this case at the moment in the city where one investment banker is suing his Japanese bank for £7 million because he thinks he's worth that and he was only given a million. When everybody has got the bonus money in their accounts, then certainly there's celebrations. And typically that will be going out to, the, to bars and spending a lot of money on champagne. But champagne isn't the only thing they'll spend their money on. Coming up, how city bonuses have sent the property prices soaring. So this is a 4.5 million pound apartment in Knightsbridge's Land Square. And Maurizio looks to splash out at the Italian Motor Show. And uh, I think the best looking car is that Alfa over there, which I think is, well, I think it's the most stunning car at the show. Really cool. When is a good deal not a good deal on home insurance? We asked a cross-section of homeowners. When they don't reward you for buying more. At Direct Line, we'll give you 50% off your home contents cover when you buy it together with our buildings insurance. That's better. When they give you a good price, but don't include any extras. And when you buy buildings and contents insurance, we'll give you free annual travel cover for all the family. That's better. 
when they have a snazzy website but no one on the phone to help you. At Direct Line, we not only have great online deals, we're on the phone in UK-only call centres. That's better. Direct Line. A good deal. Better. <sighs> Brainstorming trip? Oh. All right, honchos. Our new all singing, all dancing bank customer call centre. Where? Or as we say in Espanol, donde? <laughs> Spain. It's a bit obvious, Steve. Portugal? Come on, guys, spread your wings. All right, Morocco. No, sand flies. Ugh. Bermuda? Triangle. Great Barrier Reef. Good snorkeling. No, box jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, why can't our customers talk to us in the UK? That's where they live. The UK. the UK. We're after <laughs> blue sky thinking here. Yeah. There is another way. At NatWest, you can talk to a call center in the UK 24 7 or call your local branch direct. NatWest, another way. I know. Delhi. Delhi! Now you're talking. It's not very central, is it? Not central. It is central in India, Will. Will. Something terrible has happened to pensions' money. Billions of pounds have gone. It's not coming back. Jeff Randall reveals the devastating mistakes that will affect us for generations to come. All of you will get nothing. Where's my pension gone? Thursday, the 25th of January at 9. This summer, Thomson's long-haul flights will have more legroom than ever before. Thomson, web prices on the high street. Sorting, then checking for stains, then rubbing, and sometimes you're back where you started, doing the whole job again. When all you need is one scoop, a Vanish Oxy Action Multi in your machine. Look, here's what it's doing to those stains in your wash. <laughs> wow. And there's enough power in one scoop for the whole wash. See? Brilliant. One scoop is all you need. For better results and less effort every time. Vanish Oxy Action Multi. <laughs> Trust pink, forget stains. Also available in a handy pre-treat spray. It's called the Weetabix Week. Weetabix with honey and yogurt shoved on top of it. Weetabix with fruit compote and yogurt on it. Weetabix with hot frothy milk and what's that? <gasps> it's chocolate! Weetabix with almonds and bananas, look! Basically, we're talking about the Weetabix Week. It's just Weetabix with different stuff sloshed on it every day of the week. Nice. The Weetabix Week. Give it a go. With house prices still rising, property is a favourite investment for city workers. As bonuses hit the bank accounts, high on the shopping list, and new houses. We like spending the money we earn, or at least I do. When everybody else, all the guys that work in the city that I know, you know, when they get a good bonus, they like they like spending it. I don't know many people that, that have a, a saving culture or mentality. I'm sure that you know, if you look over to Kensington and Chelsea, you know, where a lot of bankers live, um, I'm I'm sure you would see a lot more. It, expensive house purchases going through. There are bits of London that are booming off the back of this wall of money that, you know, goes into bonuses once a year. And that is, you know, fueling the demand for very expensive second homes. But that's also having a ripple effect. It's also affecting, you know, the ability of ordinary, ordinary Londoners to buy in the housing market because it's kind of boosting prices all the way through. In some areas of London, multi-million pound homes are now being snapped up within days of coming on the market. We have placed a couple of houses sort of north of the 10 million pound mark in the last month in Knightsbridge, um, which uh, essentially both buyers were from a financial background. Uh, the number of sales at that level and above has doubled this year, but there's enormous activity, particularly between sort of two to five million pounds. The market at the moment is um, unprecedented. Uh, the growth has been uh, exceptional since the beginning of this year. We're looking at price rises of 20 to 25% since the beginning of January. So this is a 4.5 million pound apartment in Knightsbridge's Land Square. This is very much the center of the bonus belt in the high-end real estate market in London. Overlooking Hyde Park, this state-of-the-art penthouse is a city residence for the working week only. Many bankers have their main home in the country. 
In reality, an apartment like this is a pied de terre at the end of the day. It is not a home. Um, it's great for entertaining. It's a great place that's an alternative to a hotel room. And it will probably be used for parts of the year, or it'll just be used during the week if they are London-based. Um, and it'll probably fit in with a portfolio of two or three other properties in Europe or beyond. The wealth that's been generated in London is creating major problems at the lower end of the market, there's no doubt about it. Um, and for first-time buyers, it gets more and more difficult as people become multiple property owners. First-time buyers are being replaced by people who are buying to invest. And so, yes, it is causing problems further down the ladder, there's no doubt about it. It's not just the London market that keeps the estate agents busy come bonus time. One of the great advantages of this house is its proximity to London. People are time poor, so the travel side of it is very important, and you get here within an hour from London, and also it's very close to the airports, particularly Heathrow. The size of the building, it's nearly 10,000 square feet, is the sort of space that people are looking for, um, and the public rooms are very important for entertaining. Um, it also offers a lot of privacy with 28 acres around it, um, and those sort of aspects are what people are primarily after. This type of house in this location within an hour of London is certainly the sort of thing that people um, you know, working in the city um, who have a principal residence in London are going to be looking for as a weekend house uh, for entertaining, particularly in the summer. This estate comes with a price tag of four and a half million pounds. The city effect is affecting the home counties market like it is in prime central London. Um, it's all about geography and the good houses um, within an hour to an hour and a half of London is what everybody is after. The sort of amenity a country house gives you which is um, swimming pools and tennis courts and extensive garaging and so on. And so there is hot competition and the good houses in these immediate counties around London are seeing you know, serious demand driven by city purchasers. In the country, as with London, estate agents can barely keep up as competition for country estates and second homes has seen costs spiral. From Cumbria to Cornwall, younger families find themselves squeezed out. As bonuses hit an all-time high, the number of first-time buyers is now at an all-time low. Britain used to be one of the most equal developed nations in the world. Now it's one of the most unequal developed nations. And so what we have now is that the top 1% in Britain own something like a quarter of Britain's wealth. With the year's bonus about to be paid out, city dealer Maurizio Fabrice is choosing his latest sports car at an Italian motor show. I like spending my money on cars, I like driving them around. You know, I just enjoy everything about cars, racing and... Uh, and owning them. And uh, I think the best looking car is that Alfa over there, which I think is, well, I think it's the most stunning car at the show. Really cool. After 20 years as a broker, Mauricio is enjoying his biggest ever bonuses, and it's these that allow him to indulge a lifelong obsession with cars. <laughs> It's a guy thing. Most guys like cars, and if you link that to the, the wages these guys are getting paid, then they're a status symbol and it just might show off what they're doing, how well they've done, the success they're having. Porsche and Ferrari have got to be up there, especially for the younger guys. And, you know, Mercs, Bentleys now, obviously getting quite, quite popular, Aston Martins, they've come back in. It's anything that's, that looks good when you park it outside a restaurant or something. Racing sports cars cost Maurizio £80,000 every year. I got into that by accident. I went to a track day and uh, I met a guy down there called Rob Wilson who trains um, a couple of the Formula One guys and he convinced me that I should stop being a hooligan on the track with my own car and maybe do some racing. 
I've been doing it three years now, and it's a lot of fun. The adrenaline when you're in the car and you're actually in the race is probably very similar to when we're having a busy day in the office. It's, it's all about adrenaline, and the time just flies by. People don't understand that the reason that they go out and they play hard is because the environment they're in is so highly strung. Um, and people from the outside don't understand just how much effort and how much work and how much time and how many sleepless nights we all have. To mop up some of the billions of pounds spilling out from the city, a whole new service industry has sprung up with people working round the clock to meet the city's every wish and demand. Quintessentially came about uh, five years ago uh, when I set it up with my partner Ben Elliott and uh, we decided to look after some of the world's uh, richest and most connected people um, because at the time I was producing films uh, with Elton John and I used to do a lot of service work for the film stars coming into town. So we only actually look after probably the top, the top half percent of the city. So if you wanted to hire a private jet, we would go out to 50 of the best suppliers of private jets worldwide and get you the best price through to finding you a private villa, uh, or ordering your own personalised submarine, or you know, booking a famous pop star for your child's birthday party. It's almost like dream fulfilment um, that we're in the business of, and that's, I think, what people buy into. So lucrative is this growing service industry that Nick Newbury quit his city job to join in. He now organises extravagant holidays for those with no time to look at brochures. We realised there was a gap in the market for people who are time poor, cash rich. Um, I'd worked in that environment. I'd seen, I'd seen the people who were around me going on these types of short breaks before, and I knew that there was something in there for people who wanted tailored holidays that were four or five days long to pack in as much as you can into a, a short time as possible. We have guys this year who've spent well in excess of £100,000 on four or five day holidays. I took a week off a year ago to do a race in Brazil. So, you know, there was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday was the race, and three days were just cruising around. The jaw-dropping mini-break has now become the latest city status symbol. From diving with great white sharks to Amazon treks. We had 10 traders from a well-known American investment bank. Uh, it was a stag weekend. They flew up to Kirina in the Arctic Circle, headed out into the, into the wilderness by Skidoo. They then boarded onto dog sleds and led their own team of Siberian Huskies through the Lapland Mountains. They fished for their own dinner through ice holes. We'd cut in, into the ice. They certainly like to, to brag about it, but it's all about them experiencing things that, that, that very few people have done before. We do lots of different uh, travel requests, and big at the moment is eco-travel. Um, a large percentage of the city at the moment are investing in and buying up uh, the Earth's lungs, the Amazon rainforest, so, and that's being led by a couple of very, very influential city investors. So a lot of eco-travel to new destinations that aren't touched at the moment, like Mozambique. We had a guy who bought out the entire North Island in the Seychelles, which is probably one of the most luxurious places on Earth. However great or small the request, when the call comes in, personal service companies like Quintessentially are there to take it, 24 hours a day. Hi, um, I have a very important member um, mm -hmm. who I've got to get a suit for. He's on his way from Istanbul now. Okay. He's got a very important meeting tomorrow morning okay. um, and I need a kind of dark blue right. and shirt and tie as well. But okay. I need it altered as well. Okay, and that's not a problem. over by him tonight. Is okay, that all right? Not a problem at all. Can we have a look? Yes, I found a couple I thought may be quite good. I do a lot of kind of businessmen who mostly don't have the time. I do a lot of their presents as well, um, kind of birthdays, anniversaries, Christmases, um, or like I'm in Dunhill today to do um, a suit for a man who's just flown over. Got a business meeting first thing tomorrow morning, but I've, I've shot with him before, so I know his size, his colourings, what he likes, what he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, should we go? Let's go with that, okay. and then um, a shirt as well and a tie. Okay. I'm thinking blue. Classic. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of suits and kind of shooting parties. If they, um, they go shooting at the weekend, they haven't got an outfit. And so I have to literally buy the whole thing, jackets, wellies, socks, everything. I like that. That's nice. And I like, I love that. I think That's he'd love that. Tie. 
we had this one guy who he wanted this Patek Philippe watch. I mean, it's kind of over a hundred thousand um, pounds. He couldn't get his hands on it. It was kind of desperate, screaming, I, re "I really want it!" And so he came to us, and we managed to pull it off in the end. And so his son got it for his birthday. Now, what time do you need the, all the alterations done for? Um, well, and the cost for a full-time personal service like this, up to twenty-five thousand pounds a year. Conspicuous consumption by the rich is back in fashion, and we see people, you know, blowing five million pound on birthday parties, buying up islands around the world. This is not frowned on. People do it because it's acceptable. The wealth boom of recent years has gone hand in hand with a sort of public and political acceptance of, you know, spending extravagance. Coming up, how the super rich are now rubbing shoulders with the super famous. Well, Sienna Miller is involved with Click, so we're hoping she's going to come. Rachel Stevens, I think Simon Cowell. Frank Lampard, John Terry. And when the work gets too much, the city boys hit the beach in style. We did a weekend when we had a particularly good month. The guys here, we all took a yacht down to Central Park and had a few parties. The planet is in a delicate balance. For every clever thing that happens, something really dumb happens elsewhere. At 8.04, a man receives his mint card. Mm -hmm. He gets a 0% offer until November 2007 and another 0% bonus offer in January 2008. Mm. This is really clever. And at exactly the same time... Oh, the clever gun balance is restored. Oh, clever mint. Wherever you look across the African continent, a single animal will be performing the same vital role. Day after day, the humble dung beetle carries out its task. The first natural recycler, if you like. The dung beetle is close to the bottom of the food chain. That is its position in life. It has no choice. But you are not a dung beetle. Ever wondered where you can find a more satisfying job? At Friends Reunited Jobs, you find thousands of vacancies with leading employers. So search free, register your CV, and we'll do the hard work for you. Friendsreunitedjobs.co.uk. You'll never know unless you go. Chrysler 300C and 300C Touring from 26,250. No matter what your business angle is, or who you are, one thing is certain. If you want to be a tycoon, you always need a great idea. So if you've got one of those, we should talk. For more information, go to itv.com forward slash tycoon. Looking for a home? Visit primelocation.com. No other website has all the properties from the country's leading estate agents. Everything, townhouses, country houses, flats, new homes and properties abroad. So if you're looking to buy or rent, visit primelocation.com. And if you're selling or letting, make sure you choose a prime location agent. Primelocation.com. Don't move home without it. What new area will the Central London congestion charge cover? From the 19th of February, it will still cover the original area. And this new one. Congestion charging is changing. Be ready. Making glass bottles and jars from recycled ones saves energy. Just one recycled bottle saves enough energy to run a computer for 20 minutes. Recycled, the possibilities are endless. Well, I finally succumbed, got myself a personal trainer. She's introduced me to healthy green teas from the expert blenders at Twinings that contain antioxidants that may help maintain a healthy body. Monday, warm up with delectable pineapple and grapefruit. Wednesday, scrumptious orange and lotus flower. Friday, a gruelling pear and apple. And I get the weekend off. Well, I don't want to do myself an injury, do I? Fruit flavour green teas from Twinings, now including delicious new cranberry flavour. The Magnet half-price sale is now on. Plus, for a limited period, there's an extra 10% off cabinet sale prices and a free dishwasher, too. Hurry, these offers must end soon.
Nicorette and Active Stop. Together, nothing is more effective at helping you stop smoking compared to just willpower alone. Having joined the ranks of the super rich, financiers can now be found parting with them at the large charity balls that punctuate the social calendars. At the heart of the season is La Dolce Vita, a lavish party to raise money for the charity of ex-Formula One motor racing boss, Eddie Jordan. As the party draws near, organizers are fine-tuning the event and the guest list. Five minutes, half an hour after that, Alexander O'Neill. Ring filler. Have you spoken to anyone about any yet? Celebrities. Obvious ones that we've got confirmed with tables mm -hmm. is Peter Stringfellow, yeah. Martin Brundle, Eddie Jordan, Billy Zane, and Kelly Brook. Yeah. Sienna Miller, Jude Law. Well, Sienna Miller is involved with Click, so we're hoping she's going to come. Rachel Stevens, I think Simon Cowell, Frank Lampard, John Terry. They can't now because they've now Chelsea are playing Newcastle on the Wednesday, mm -hmm. which means the Chelsea boys can't come. Okay. We've got two tables assigned. Where for are the celebs. two tables for the last minute celebs that call up and say they're going to go? Th that one there's 17, 17. And three. Three, three it is, yeah. This is the most difficult part of this thing, you know, <laughs> doing the bloody table plan. Let's go through where we've got some of these, these main guys then in the room. We know he's got the guys from Rab Capital, Clareville, yep. Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, the Man Group, Morgan Stanley all those boys and we, we, we know they're going to bid okay so they need to be mm -hmm. in good positions we hope that they're going to be generous events like La Dolce Vita attract the more experienced city bankers and dealers who have already made their fortunes the younger ones are busy making money and a reputation at 25, Laurie Inman is one of the most successful young traders in the world today. It's just something that always interested me and there was a competitive side to it and also there was good money to be made from it. My dad used to be a black taxi driver in London and obviously used to buy newspapers and bring them home at night and I'd have a read through them and stock pages were something I was quite interested in and always had a look through. People in the city are hugely driven. They tend to be uh, young. They tend to be generally at the top of their peer group. And quite often when institutions are hiring, they will tend to look for people that have got outside interests, be that sporting interest or theatrical or whatever. So people have achieved outside of academic life. Like many in the city, Laurie's passion is horse racing. And at the weekend, he heads to Ascot with VIP tickets. During my university summers, um, I used to spend them working at uh, bookmakers, taking bets for people, um, which obviously had the betting aspect which interested me. 150 quid on a pseudo, please. 157. Thanks very much, cheers. Each day, Laurie risks hundreds of thousands of pounds trading on the European markets. I wouldn't say I like taking the risk because when I put a trade on, I, same as anyone else, I don't really view it as a risk. I view it as I'm going to be right. If things aren't going great, it can be frustrating. There's times where you can be right about buying the market or selling the market and lose money. And, you know, you have to try and control your temper as best as you can. Come on, Pops. Congratulations. Oh, about evens now, after that. Not too bad. Mate did all right on, the, on that, though. I don't know, he had £40 on a 9 to 1 shot, so at 360 quid he won. So it's how okay. you spend your spare time? Uh, some of it, yeah. Uh, now and then, when I can, when I've got a weekend off, I like to come to a race and whatever else. While small fortunes can be made or lost at the races, they're nothing compared to the billions of pounds being gambled in a city awash with money. 
In terms of the standing of the city, I think it's uh, internationally seen as being incredibly successful, which is interesting considering a few years back people had forecast the demise of the city and everyone would be going to Frankfurt and Paris. But in fact, exactly the opposite has happened. More business has come in from the Far East, from China and Russia, and even from America as well. Defenders of the salaries and bonuses point to other less publicised statistics. The city pays more than £13 billion a year into the public pot, far more than it takes out. And the country's financial workers generate more than one-third of the nation's income. It's highly profitable, very successful, and probably our most successful industry for the country, particularly in terms of paying tax to the, to the government. There would be a lot of scepticism at the, the amount of money that are paid to some of these people, um, but you need to take in the context of what they actually generate for the banks. These people are at the top of their profession. They work extremely long hours. Um, they tend to put a lot of time and effort into the development of their career, perhaps sacrificing other things. Stereotypical kind of city boy, I imagine, is, I don't know, people drinking champagne and getting drunk at lunchtime. And, in terms of my office and looking around the people I know, it's, it really isn't anything like it. It couldn't probably be any more professional. People put in 12, 13 hour days and even when they finish they go home at night and read their charts and check things. You know, it's as professional as you can imagine. It's a very pressurised job, it is. They don't give you the money for nothing. Um, the hours are intense. You know, you have to give up your weekends at a second's notice. Friday afternoon was a classic period when people of my level were desperately hoping that they'd get out of the office by around six-ish, which is obviously early, but this is Friday. Um, because if you were there much past that, there's a good chance that you'd end up getting, getting landed with the deal that had to be done over the weekend. Polly Courtney joined one of the city's biggest investment banks straight from university. Despite the generous bonuses, she found the long hours a high price to pay. There were good times and it was nice uh, to, to have that, that amount of money to splash around and to live that lifestyle. So just a sort of elevated, um, living in an elevated world where everybody, you know that you can sort of afford whatever you want. It's just a question of making time to go and get it. Um, but on balance, I would say that that lifestyle was not for me. Only those who make it their life will survive in the city for long. It's just a fun job. I mean, it's very quick and very, you know, there's a lot of vibe to it. And uh, you meet a lot of people and you're constantly on the phone to people, so it's quite social. Um, the entertainment's great. We take clients out all the time. Um, and it just sort of rolls into your personal life as well. So I just like the fact that I never had the difference between work and play, if you want. What I specifically like about my job is the fact that Every day is different and it's a new challenge. You, you come into work and you don't really know what's going to happen. Also, because you're working for yourself and you're working on your own opinion, there's a certain amount of satisfaction involved when you are right. It's the best job in the world, basically. It wasn't Laurie's first career choice. That was football. And on Friday nights, he competes in a city league with fellow traders. But trading has enabled him to match the salary of many Premiership footballers. The money I make probably is similar to what footballers make, but the one big difference is footballers are guaranteed their money week in, week out, whereas we're not guaranteed that. And as much as I make money on given days, I have days where I don't make money and those days can turn into weeks. It is very competitive and I think one thing that's helped me is the fact that I had a strong competitive sport background and trading the markets is very much like playing a sport, it's people against people all the time. And like a premiership football club, city firms are keen to protect their talent and steer them away from the temptations that come with excessive wealth. 
banks recognise that their biggest assets are their people and consequently they're keen to keep them. So I think whether that be basically providing personal financial advice, whether that means giving them access to other banking products from an investment perspective, or even very basic things such as the banks tend to be paternalistic. They provide dry cleaning, they provide gyms, they provide basically on-site catering, they provide a lot of other facilities to ensure that the employee is happy. Absolutely, it's becoming much more normal, it's becoming much more paternalistic as part of the bank's attitude to actually retain their staff. We have performance coaches and um, people that talk to you and we're, we're constantly having you know people coming in and teaching us technical sides of it, same as footballers have coaching every single day. And the single-minded dedication to money making pays off. This year financiers will make up one third of the rich list, replacing industrialists and the aristocracy. Each will need to have earned more than 75 million just to get on it. Then there are the other gauges of wealth. The business magazine uh, has produced this list of the 50 most powerful people in the city of London. And we've got some really interesting characters on this list. And here we've got Bob Diamond. He's American and he runs Barclays Investment Bank Division. That's the most powerful, most profitable part of Barclays. It's much more exciting and makes much more money than the high street bank that, that we all are used to. Last year, the Barclays Supremo banked a bonus of 15 million, but others make even more. Higher up on the list is Michael Sherwood of investment bank Goldman Sachs. He's 40 now, and he's worth millions and millions of pounds, but he was already making almost a million pounds a year when he was about 28. He's now worth 185 million pounds. Last year, he flew a dozen friends by private jet to Paris to watch the Champions League final. What's quite interesting about Sherwood is that he went to the University of Manchester. And in the old days in the city, when it was run by the old blue-blooded merchant banks, someone from the University of Manchester could never have climbed to the top so quickly and made so much money. It would take a teacher 2,000 years to earn the 50 million bonus paid to one of Sherwood's star players. But there are some who are even wealthier. But probably the most interesting and the most exciting man on our list, and the one we've ranked the most powerful man in the city, is Michael Spencer. He runs ICAP. That's his own bank. He's created a new institution, employs thousands of people, and generates huge amounts of, of money. And he's now worth at least 600 million pounds. For his 50th birthday, Spencer threw a lavish party at his multi-million pound estate in France. Basically, brought in Robbie Williams, paid him one and a half million pounds, and that was the entertainment for his party. But a man who's worth 600 million can easily do that. It's high rollers like these that the La Dolce Vita charity ball needs to attract. Getting the famous to turn up is one thing. Getting the rich to attend and part with their cash at the glittering auction is another. Well, most of the bidders are in the dance floor area, really. Um, we try and get them strategically placed so the auctioneer can spot them and get to them. The table of ten is £8,000, which we've stuck to because uh, we don't want to discount at all. Um, and we've had a good response. We've sold out, which is, I think, says it all anyway. Um, I seem to be on schedule, so I'm very, I'm very happy. I'm very relaxed at the moment, which is very unusual for me. I'd normally be tearing my hair out at this stage. Charities aren't the only ones competing for a piece of the city's billions. The ripple effect of the bonus payouts is being felt as far away as the south of France, Cannes, Saint-Tropez the traditional playground of the rich. It's the old favourite, the south of France, the Côte d'Azur. People will always fly private jets down to Nice uh, or Marseille. They then board their fantastic yachts. Sometimes they're owning their own yachts and we therefore only have to source their private jet journeys down there. Um, their villas down there we can find no problem at all. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the old favourite. 
Like their counterparts in London, estate agents here are enjoying a surge in sales. Modern communications means that you can now actually run your business um, from your house down here. Um, if you've got to get back to London or Newcastle or wherever um, very quickly, you could get back and come down again. People don't even know that you left your office. And in terms of prices, we are talking about somewhere between 650,000 and about six, seven million pounds. We did a weekend when we had a particularly good month. The guys here, we all took a yacht down to Central Pay and had a few parties on there. You know, the Central Pay crowd is, is quite, um, you know, city-ish. Boats, yachts and private jets and, and all that. And there's a couple of guys that I know that have got houses down there. There's big money going and flying around at the moment, so, um, yeah, they like their perks, definitely. We like our perks, <laughs> put it that way. So here we are just outside the village of Le Plan de la Tour, a few kilometres back from the Bay of Saint-Tropez. Um, this is a beautiful house, recently built um, to a very high standard. Uh, it's got three reception rooms, five bedrooms, um, a little caretaker's flat, just over a hectare of landscape gardens and a beautiful infinity pool, which instead of overlooking the sea, overlooks the vineyards, which as you can see with all the wisps of smoke, um, is a particularly attractive view and which changes all the year round. Always nice to drop the odd name. Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis lived just around the corner, and I suppose they had the, uh, the choice, so if they chose this particular place, um, there must be a reason. To go into more solid details, the price is uh, €3,250,000, uh, which we think is extremely good value. We find that the colossal amount of money that is made available and available to be spent in the city, uh, we feel an immediate knock-on effect here because it's the nearest sea and sun to the principal commercial centres of Europe and starting off with London. Indeed, we're looking towards a very busy spring and um, for what it's worth, we've never, in, in 34 years, I've never had such a busy October, November. Competition is fierce among city buyers for these exclusive Saint-Tropez properties. It's very interesting how um, people who made a lot of money in the city used to be totally anonymous. No one would recognise them in a restaurant walking down the street. And now people become celebrities for so many different reasons. The city slicker has become a bit of a sort of dilettante now when he's, when, he's, uh, when he's out in a restaurant. He knows everybody, knows all about the deals he's done. And I think he enjoys that celebrity. Back in London, the money continues to be made. And as the charity auction gets underway, it's being spent. It's got a totally unique handmade badge on it. Four ounces of solid silver and 2.2 carats of diamonds. But for one city worker, the cash is no longer enough. My happiness is actually more important than besides my wallet. It's a wonderful night. Come on and break it on down. Sainsbury's have got a new way to help you get your five a day. All you have to do is peel. Pick up a big five drive game card when you spend £10 or more on groceries and you could win one of your five a day. Sainsbury's, try something new today. People of Britain, continue to challenge Churchill. Challenge Churchill? Yes, person of Britain. Challenge Churchill to give you a better insurance deal. Can you guarantee to beat the price I'm paying now for my car insurance? Oh, yes. Oh, Churchill, what about home insurance? Can you do the same for that? Oh, no. Come on, Britain. If you haven't claimed for three years, we still guarantee to beat your renewal price. Oh, yes. Keep challenging Churchill. If you hit me at 40 miles an hour, there's around an 80% chance I'll die. <gasps> hit me at 30 and there's around an 80% chance I'll live. Take a short break at Centre Parks. Call 08705 200 222 for your free DVD and brochure or visit centreparks.co.uk. This 
week in New Mad. Really? Nightmare. Hush and Beck. Complexion. Slim Thigh. Leggings. So Paris. Cool. Preston. Booze Battle. Celebrity. Gorgeous. Big Pan. A list. Russell Brown. Weird. Mingy. Rumor. Huge. Diamonds. Sozzle Diva. Falling out. 70 things for 70p. New Magazine out now. To know where you're going. My parents are both gone now, and you don't take it for granted anymore. You must know where you're from. This is where it all started. Anne Kirkbride steps back in time. This is how my great-grandfather grew up. This is it, isn't it? You Don't Know You're Born, a new series, next Tuesday at 9. Ladies and gentlemen, men. Ladies and gentlemen. The thing about writing a best man's speech is that it's got to be hilarious. Get it right, you're a hero. Get it wrong. You've ruined the most important day in your brother's life. There must be websites that you can rip witty anecdotes from. Only BT Total Broadband includes Wi-Fi minutes, which give you wireless access when you're out, as well as at home, so you can now take your broadband with you. Apparently they were so loud, you could hear them in Nairobi. <laughs> Look at his face! <laughs> Get a more complete broadband experience from 9 95 a month for the first six months. Thinking about protecting your loved ones? We'd like to see if we can help. Our new Protection for Life plan gives you individually tailored cover to meet your needs. Come in and see us at any branch of Lloyd's TSB or log on to scottishwidows.co.uk. Preparation is everything. Fortunes will be made with it. Wars will be fought for it. Lives will be changed by it. Blood Diamond. I work for the future. I work to create style. I work because I care. I work for my family. Sometimes a job's a job. Sometimes it's a career. When it's right, it's a passion. Whoever you are, whatever you want to do, Monster has the tools to find the right match to take you there. Add your CV on Monster today and find the job that works for you. Monster works for me. In London, the city's financial elite take to the red carpet, mingling with socialites and celebrities for La Dolce Vita, a lavish charity ball and auction. We want to raise as much money as we can tonight. So it's key that we have all those people in the room and that they're having a good time. I think once we get them in the right frame of mind, I'm hoping that they're all going to start being very generous. Host for the evening is Neil Morrissey. Well, I go and have a look at the stage. Yeah, I'll have show have you where you're sitting. But, you know. Cool. Yeah, so, so that side of stage, and then we will uh, introduce you, and then you'll go on and... Um, introduce the just, evening. Introduce the evening. And let everyone know when things are going to happen. Yeah, so don't worry, we're not going to... Yeah, no worries. Miss it. Don't, we're not gonna do I look worried? No. <laughs> <laughs> the guest list is a who's who of the city and includes global financial giant Cantor Fitzgerald, which has spent 80,000 on 10 tables. These guys have got magnums of champagne on their tables, they've got great wines to drink. It's going to be fun. After the four course meal, the auction. The first lot is a Harley Davidson, with a difference. It's got a totally unique handmade badge on it. Four ounces of solid silver and 2.2 carats of diamonds. So they give me 20,000 pounds for a quick sergeant with this marvellous fight. 29, I've got you. Now 22. You haven't even paid for the badge yet. 22, 22, 24, 24. For the big names of the city, tonight is a chance to flaunt their wealth and compete with one another in open combat. Who's going to outbid each other? Who's going to want to puff their chest out the most? That's, that's what we normally see, that's what I want to see tonight. You mean that's it, 28, that's it. Don't you listen to your wife if you're assuming that's her. 28, 30. Within half an hour, the auction raises half a million pounds. 40,000 now, sir. 40,000 now, sir. And 45, sir. 50,000 then. 50,000. For the third. And as the evening goes on, the final figure looks like breaking all previous records. 90,000 second time, 90,000 to the generous gentleman on the right there for the third and last time, and 90,000. 
All the money raised will go towards the children's charity run by ex-Formula One boss Eddie Jordan. The final lot is the chance to spend a day as chairman of Chelsea Football Club. Could we jump to 100 now? 40,000 pounds for the third and last time, Mr. Neomate is so wonderful. Yes, I bought a uh, chairman of Chelsea, I think I bought it. Good boy! Uh, uh, see next to Roman. And, and then also um, uh, the F1 times two. When you reach the magic figure of a million dollars, I mean, it's quite a scary figure. In one room, by one group of people, a lot of them friends, and great supporters of this charity. And uh, goose pimples is a word that comes to mind, because that's how I feel. It's a very, very moving moment. Eddie's been very, very good to me. Uh, my firm was the one who was affected by 9-11 the most, and right after that, he came to our aid to help us raise a lot of money for those families, so that's all I can do to get back. Hello. <laughs> it's not the only party of the evening. Across town, Polly Courtney has decided that, despite the big bonuses, the city life is not for her. She quit to write a novel based on her experiences there. Tonight is her first book launch. A lot of people ask if I regret giving my stable, high-earning job um, for a very unstable, very poor-paying profession, which is writing. Um, to be honest, I'm the sort of person for whom my happiness, this sounds very corny, but my happiness is actually more important than my, the size of my wallet. Um, and I, I'm so much happier. I'm my own personality now. Laurie Inman is celebrating too having been included in an official list of the top 30 young traders in the world. I love my job. When I look at it and realise what I have and what I've gained from it, it's just, I realise how fortunate I am. With his city earnings, Tom Wanless is taking time out to travel and to invest in property in the Seychelles. And Maurizio Fabrice has proved successful on the track as well as in the dealing room. He's just been handed the keys to a brand new Maserati racing car after winning his championship. After a year of record-breaking salaries and payouts, thousands of people in the city have good reason to celebrate. They deserve these kind of bonuses. The answer is almost entirely no. They're not expanding the size of the cake from which we all benefit. What they're doing is using their kind of economic and political muscle to grab a bigger share of the cake for themselves. The city's defenders disagree. But even they believe the era of the mega bonus can't last forever. What will change it? The key word is confidence. If people don't have confidence, then those deals won't happen. The cost of money has been rising, uh, and the economies have been doing rather well. If that starts slowing, and it's very likely to do so, then you may well find an end to this period. 